Oh my god, I feel like I haven't filmed a video in ages. I've actually been, pin been putting off in this video. I don't know why, don't ask me why. It's really, really bizarre, but hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Ailey, and if you are not, then hello. It is good to see you again. It is now October. I feel like September literally went puff, like gone. Like where, where did that actually go? Like where did that month go? And I feel like I didn't read a lot in September either. I'm not quite sure what happened from going to like reading 20 books in August to like only reading like under 10. Like under 10. It was so low but also not really mad about that because I can't keep reading 20 books every single month. That's just not doable but we're gonna go through every single one of the books that I have read in September. So get ready for it because Actually, I don't think it is that exciting, but yet we're going to talk about it. Try and do it in chronological order as well, and try and do it really, really quickly, because as you can see, I'm going out now. I'm going out tonight, and um, I need to film this. So filming it quickly now before I leave. Anyway, the first book I read in September was a Hades and Persephone Greek retelling story which was Neon Gods by Kate Robert. This is one of the books that I bought in Hay on Y, which is in Wales. It is a book town if you don't know. I think it was the, actually the first book town to be built. I don't know in the world but I definitely know it is in the UK and this is one of the books that I bought from it. Neon Gods. This is a spicy dark romance book. I think I ended up giving it only three stars though because there were some aspects within the book that I was like what is going on? I don't really follow the plot and it felt like it could have gone deeper, like it could have just gone into something a lot more. I think the end of the book was really really rushed but yeah it was still enjoyable. There were still moments where I was like oh my god like, why is this cute? Like why am I really <laughs> enjoying this book? So character development wise and like relationship wise really really light. It isn't enemies to lovers. It is a fake dating. It is a forced proximity. It is like spicy. Like this is one of the spicier books that I've read but not like because there was a lot of like spicy scenes but because there was a lot of talk and just the environment that this world was in especially Hades' world. There is there are some things there are some things that you wouldn't just see in a normal book so yeah. Enemies to lovers, spicy, Greek mythology retelling. It is also a modern retelling as well. There is arranged marriage too but like not what you really think. Anyway, it is still a book that I would recommend. I really, really do want to read the rest of the series as well. I think I am going to order the rest of the series because each of the books within the Dark Olympus series are different Greek mythology. I have no idea what the next one is about, but definitely want to carry on the series. Anyway, we then moved on to another Dark Romance series on my Kindle, which was The Ritual by, who is this by? Chantelle Tassia, I think that's how you pronounce her last name. Oh my dear lord. This is actually part of the Lords series, which is about like a secret society who has to do, go through all of these like tests and all of these like trial things to prove their loyalty. And some of it is absolutely messed up stuff. I think it's the darkest upon darks I have actually read. Um, one of the spiciest books I've ever read. This book is not for the week. It is not. The subjects that have been spoken about, like the themes that go in it, the plot was actually really good. I did enjoy the plot and the overall story it was telling. And I'm really intrigued to see the other stories because as well you can read each of the books as standalones, like the Neon God series. Obviously it is recommended to go in chronological chronological order but each book is a different couple it's a different story but within the same theme the ritual was like donovan and cc like processive spicy i think it kind of was like a little enemies to lovers because of the situation that our main girl was put in 
Um, she did not want to be the person that she ended up being. But I think some like other like little things happened. This was a really, really long book as well. So <laughs> you have been warned. But yeah, we are following. I can't remember his name. It was something like Raker, something like that. Writer. Right. Riker. Something like that. And what's her name? I can't remember. Anyway, um, it is a college story as well. And it was just all in all just it was like a romance book, like a college romance book heightened by like 10 times. I'm gonna say that. It was a lot. It was so intense all the time, but also not boring. And it wasn't the intense where I was like scared and uncomfortable. It was like the good intense where I was just like, I need to know what happens, even though it's intimidating that it was like a 600 page book. But yeah, I ended up giving her four stars. I don't know the trace I would put it in, but there was definitely a marriage trope and a grumpy ex sunshine as well. I don't know what else to tell you without spoiling it, but yeah, this was a five out of five spice rating. It was a lot, like a lot. Anyway, let's quickly move on to the next book I read. This was actually a reread, and that was The Seven and the Wings of Night. My second fantasy book of the month. I would say Neon Gods is also like kind of a th fantasy because of the whole like Greek mythology retelling. But now we're getting on to vampires. My days. I read this book maybe a year ago, just over a year ago for the first time and didn't actually enjoy it. I didn't understand it. I think I was generally going through some sort of a slump because this book just didn't hit the first time. I was so confused. I didn't know what was going on. I think I got nearly halfway and then realised it was vampires and I was like what the hell. But reading it a second time and actually paying attention, I don't think it was the book's fault but I think it was generally like my attention span just wasn't there the first time I read it because the second time I read it I really really actually enjoyed it. We are following Aurea who is a human within this vampire world. She is like the princess because the king vampire person thing adopted her. Not for the, not the kindness out of his heart adoption that we all thought was it was gonna be, but we find out that later in the book. Minor spoiler. But yeah, and it was Ryan. A load of people call him like Rain, um, but there's a H in his name. So I call him Ryan because it's kind of Gaelic, but not. That's why I just called him. I called him Ryan because that made that just made sense in my head. Anyway, he's a vampire and they are both in this trial competition thing that honours the goddess that created all of the vampires. And my lord, it was not what I expected. There's like a portion where they have to team up within the book and obviously the two main characters teamed up. And Ryan is probably one of my favourite characters because he was just, he was not babying her. He was not like, oh come on, I will protect you, I will keep you safe. Like he was giving her the honest truth, was like, you can protect yourself, you're fine. Obviously when the feelings started to feel, then that kind of turned into a little bit of a simp, but like not in a way that belittled her. Because I find that sometimes within books, like with some of the like heroes, as soon as they like fall in love or something with this like badass woman, they then are like, no, you still have this, you have to stay safe, you can't handle it, I will protect you, right, right, right. And I'm like, no, she can protect herself. Anyway, I didn't get that with this book and I really enjoyed it. Like there's so much betrayal and just, it was just, I don't know what to explain, like how to explain it. It's your simple like enemies to lovers, trial, false proximity, you know, there was, um, what's the word? What was the word I literally just used? Oh my days. Partnership? Is that the word? No, alliances, alliances. Um, And just like skeletons in the closet because oh my days did so many secrets come out and people we thought were friends were not friends. And yeah, this book definitely took me on a roller coaster, but again, didn't enjoy it the first time, but ended up giving it a four stars the second time I read it. So don't really know what happened there. But then I did move on to another Kindle read, which was actually the second one to that book and that was The Ashes and the Starcast King. Didn't enjoy this one that much. I'm not gonna say, this one felt like a backtrack from the first book and I really actually struggled with it because of how the first one 
ended and we made all of this progress within the first book for then the second book to feel as if that was all stripped away. Took me a while to read, took me a while to get through. I still gave it a four stars just because of how it developed. And I think as soon as I got halfway, it actually started to get good. As soon as we got over that like main, that main problem, it was just so, like so much better. But yeah, I don't wanna carry on. Like the series is a series that I would recommend. Thinking back on the second one, I think I would only give it a 3.5 because it's not a book that I keep thinking about, but the first one like is. I would always recommend the first one. Like it's such a good fantasy read to start with, but you have to pay attention to it. It's like, it's a mid read. I'm not gonna say it's an easy read, but I'm not also gonna say it's a hard read, it's like mid. And like it's minimum spice as well. I think there was like, not a lot. Going from reading the ritual to the serpent in the wings of night was like, yeah, this has no spice in it. Like this doesn't have anything. That's how crazy the ritual was. Bear that in mind. But yeah, ended up reading that book on Kindle because I don't have the paper copy because the paper copy actually hasn't been released yet, which is a little bit annoying, but it was on Kindle. So all good. Anyway, we then actually moved on to one of my most anticipated reads for the month just gone, and that was Quicksilver by Carrie Kelly Hart. Hart? Hart. I really wanted this book in paperback because so many people were just raving about it. Like, I had seen this book all over social media that I was like, oh my god, it's another Shadow Daddy. It's another grumpy morally grey fae who has like some sort of shadow powers if my memory serves me correct i'm pretty sure but this is the first this first blah, blah, blah. the first book in the series fae and alchemy i'm pretty sure that's, that's what it's called but i only gave this book a four stars I don't know what it was about this book, but I completely understand one, why people love it so much, and two, why people DNF it. It's, it's kind of like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. And I did love it, because there was moments where I was like, this is the funniest book I've ever read, but also I was like, what the hell is going on? Because this is only one perspective, and we are following her, whose name I got, I think it was like Saris, something like that. You were only getting her point of view. We were following along the story that she was going through at the time, instead of getting like Fisher, I hate his name, I still hate his name, that's so, no. King Fisher, that's what the, the guy's name's called that everyone on social media was like simping over. Blech. Anyway, I found out that is not his real name, thank god. But yeah, I felt, I felt as if reading this book, if we got both perspectives and within the book there was more recaps of information that we had, then I think I would have understood the plot a lot better. I really enjoyed the character development between the two characters because it was a human fae. She was more powerful than he could ever like have thought of because of her being human and not a fae. And then the whole like enemies to lovers things that then went on and just them in general and how they interacted interacted with each other. Like Kingfisher, hilarious, so funny. But also Sarah's how she wouldn't back down even though she was like so weak compared to them. Loved that. But yeah, the, the actual Quicksilver itself, it took me a while to imagine what it was and actually understand what it did as well. I probably got nearer towards the end of the book and then I actually like got it, but I was really confused on the plot pretty much all the way out until the very end until we got all the answers and sometimes when I was reading the book it felt as if I was missing information and then I was going back trying to find that information only to find out if I kept on reading it would then be answered like my questions would then be answered so I don't know if it was generally like just the writing of how it was structured that confused me but still I gave it four stars it was still like really good and gripped my attention but it only gripped my attention when I was sitting down for long periods of time reading it. It's not a type of book that I could have like picked up, read for a little bit, put down, picked up, blah blah blah, like carry that on. I think if I did that it would have only been a three stars because I think I would have been so confused. But the fact that I like read it in big chunks 
helped. But then again, that might have just been me. That might have just been like my perspective on the book and how I took information. But not not easy for a dyslexic person. Just gonna say that anyway. Yeah. But also, um, it d doesn't have a proper blurb. And I think if it had a proper blurb that summed up the story or like summed up what the like first part of the book is like what she was having to do or something like what a blurb usually is would have helped me place where the story was and what was overall happening instead of trying to make it up in my head does that make sense i don't know if that makes sense anyway still really good would still recommend people to read generally because i'm curious what everyone else thought of it but anyway we're then moving on to another dark romance because september is my time where i read dark romance and fantasy because those are my favorite genres like ever and then we moved on to read there are no saints by sophie lark this was a short and sweet book that I needed. A bit strange at times, obviously because it is such a small book, I did feel as if there was a lot of information like missing or that it could have gone into a lot more detail. But, again, but then again, that wasn't the point of the book. It was supposed to be like an easy, straightforward read that also had fan art. Well, not fan art, but just like art in general, which I like loved. That was such a lovely surprise <laughs> reading this book. But yeah, it is a dark romance, so it does hold a lot of, let's just say dramatic, dramatic and graphic scenes. But I still gave it a four stars. We're following this famous sculptor who becomes obsessed with this poor painter. Something dramatic happens at the start of the books that leads them both together. And then just things carry on there. I guess it's like a stranger's to enemies to then lovers. This is a part of the duet, so there is another book after it. I have yet to read the second one. It is on Kindle Unlimited, so do really, really, really want to read that book as well, but like not desperate to read it. Again, it was another four star read. I felt like a lot of this month was like four or five stars. Did we read a five star book? We did read a five star book. Oh my god, I'm gonna talk about it next. But yeah, this month was like mainly like four stars, but still. I love a good dark romance and this is such a good book for like the autumn season just because it's a little bit darker, it's a little bit moodier, there's like morally grey characters and just like men. <laughs> But then we move on to read one of my favourite books. This is probably one of my top five favourite books and that is a new release by Hannah Grace, <laughs> Daydream. Oh my god, I love this book so much that I did not want it to end. It was a stranger's two friends, two lovers. She was his private tutor but he was also helping her experience life and live out of the box and do all the things that she has only ever dreamed of doing. It is Henry and Haley's story and I love it. I think it's actually Hallie. I think I said her name wrong. Hallie. But oh did I love this book so much. Yes. Not only because it tackled a lot of like mental health issues. Well not even mental health issues. It's just generally people's brains working differently than normal people which really connected with me coming from like my messed up brain that doesn't like to work like a normal human being. So reading a book that has not only personality traits that I can relate to but also like learning difficulties and just mental health situations and things and how certain people handle those things that related so much. I fell in love with this book. I fell in love with Henry and who he, and who he is. I, I gave this book a five stars. It, it was a book I just, I longed out for as long as possible. It probably took me so long to read because I did not want to rush through it. I wanted to appreciate every single possible thing about this book and it is also a fake dating as well and I loved it. You just watch these two characters slowly fall in love with each other and support each other in every single way possible and it was just great. I loved it so much. I think everyone should read this book. <laughs> if you didn't enjoy it, then please don't talk to me. Like, just don't, because I don't actually think I can mentally ha handle you if you said anything bad about this book. Okay? Okay, glad we cleared that up. But yeah, in love. I actually love Hannah Gray's. It's such an easy book to, to like, follow. Like, her, her writing style is so easy. I am putting her up 
as like one of my favourite authors along with Ali Hazelwood because she's another author that I absolutely love to read and her writing is so easy and just her storytelling and as well in general is just like Mwah. I am starting to feel that with Hannah Grace and I'm so excited for her next one to come out but yeah and the last book that I read in September was a, another fantasy and another Kindle book and that was The Veiled Kingdom which is the first book in the Veiled Kingdom series. This is another fae romance, like romancy, and oh my god I read this in one sitting. This was the, a book that I read when I was driving along to Cornwall. Well I wasn't driving obviously but I read this in like the car and absolutely fell in love with it. It was so easy to read. It was about this fey princess who runs away from her father, the king, because of how brutal he is towards her. And we actually see her story start when she's been away for a year. And we see her life like after she's run away. And I actually really like that aspect because a lot of books I find with like runaway princesses, we see them run away. Like we follow their stories to like seeing them run. And then the next book is them like after that. But this one started like towards that end and actually like how she's been living. And I really, really, really enjoyed that. To then the fact where she somehow manages to find herself in the deep hornet's nest of the rebels who are trying to find this princess because nobody knows the princess has like run away nobody knows she is missing so this rebel gang people it is like an underground kingdom itself hence the title the veiled kingdom like she is listening to them talk about how they're going to break into the castle to find her because she's the princess that everyone knows who she is but has never seen because she's also powerless she's powerless in this world all of the fae have some sort of power and she was born with zero power no power and that's why the king was so horrible to her because she was the heir to the throne and had like nothing like he was embarrassed by her and was like you are not having my crown so I'm locking him away from everybody and nobody can know till she like broke out and then has been living on the streets for a year quite fine without any power until she gets taken to the rebel people and uh yeah has to hide her identity even more it was just so good and also like seeing it is another like enemies to lovers because she obviously is terrified for them to find out who she is and also for them to find out that the reason why she was locked away wasn't because she had like this great power which they thought she had but because she had no power like none i think she actually did confess to having no power but nobody believed her because she couldn't fake anything obviously but yeah we follow like her her trying to like hide who she is and like survive in this world but also like how curious she is about this world because it is underneath the kingdom that she knew and it has all of these amazing qualities with it and also the commander's son doesn't believe her doesn't doesn't believe a word she's saying and thinks she's lying and hiding her power so has made it his mission to find out everything about her which obviously she does not want so we're following that and then obviously one thing leads to another and it turns into an enemy's lovers and false proximity as well because he will not leave her alone so he's low-key become obsessed as well with her there is also a one bed trope too it's only a miniature but whenever the one bed thing comes into it and they share a bed it is the most amazing thing to read in the world also how they like went from enemies to lovers I think was done really really well because I do find in a lot of books like that it kind of jumps all of a sudden when this one didn't feel like it because there was an instant within the book that made secrets come out and things happened and I was like I've one never read like this sort of thing before especially from the male side where it's usually the female who if you've read the book knows what I'm talking about hopefully you know what I'm talking about because if you don't know what I'm talking about then this is really awkward but in general how it happened I actually really enjoyed so I did end up giving it a four stars it was really close to a five stars I think I gave it like a 4.5 actually to be clear 
but again it's like one of those like easy reads I find with every single like easy read it can always go into a little bit more detail but I do need to read the second one because that is on kindle and so I might get a little bit deeper into it because the end of the book did leave in a cliffhanger and not I do want to know what happens next and I think I am going to read it this month but you'll have to wait until I tell you this month's TBR because I'm actually so excited for it. But yeah, those are all the books that I read in September. A mixture of romance, dark romance and fantasy. I say that, I only read one romance book, the rest of them were either dark romance or fantasy and I think that is what you're gonna get from me for like the rest of winter and autumn. So yeah, stuff to look forward to. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Hopefully next month we can read more books because I just caught up to my Goodreads target. I'm finally just on track, but I have a funny feeling I am now behind track again. So need to catch up on that again. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one. Mwah, peace, goodbye.